Good day folks, my name is Alex. Welcome back to Dragonfly Projects and Homestead. Today, DIY radon mitigation system. So today's video is special because it is a health and safety video for the health of me and my family. Now, if you don't know, radon is a odorless, um, <clears throat> transparent gas that naturally comes out of the ground. It's formed, as I understand, from the decay of uranium in the ground it's naturally occurring it's something that's found everywhere and it comes through the ground and it gets trapped into um, basically houses radon is the number one cause as far as I understood of lung cancer in non-smokers and if you're a smoker you're greatly more at risk of lung cancer now when we bought the house the previous owners had to sell because the uh, one of the owners had cancer and they were moving closer to where they were having treatment. I didn't ask what kind, but seeing how high the levels were inside the house, I imagine it didn't help. The thing, it never had forced air, this house. It was heated on the first floor or the main floor by a wood stove. Um, when we moved in, there were no exhausts for the uh, stove. The bathroom exhaust was plugged and well the hole was plugged with something so no air could go through it was physically unplugged so it wouldn't turn on so there was zero zero exchange of air inside of the house and uh when i purchased when i came across radon basically i was watching or reading an article i think it was mike holmes i know nobody is a fan of mike holmes but it was an interesting article so what i did is i bought uh air things corentium home uh, radon detector now this gives you a long-term average obviously they say that you want at least three months of data to have an accurate uh, number so it's either me uh, measured in becquerel per meter cube uh, in canada or pico curry per liters in the states now i'm going to go with becquerel because this is what i have in canada just know that the numbers are very 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 different so you see here i have a long-term average number so this has been in my basement for the last 14 months taking data uh, obviously in the summer you're in and out of the house more you open the windows more so the levels are always uh, lower and in the winter the numbers always climb way way higher I finally decided that I had to do something about it because my short-term average and my daily average uh, recently has been over 200 becquerels uh, per meter cube and officially Health Canada says that anything under 200 is acceptable. Uh, I know the Air Things detectors. I also have a View Plus, which does more than just radon. They set their level at 150 uh, for uh, health and safety concerns for long-term exposure. So I was way over 200. I was in the 250 easily, almost 300. And basically what I did is I purchased um, a fan that's meant for a radon system to exhaust all the radon. So what you're trying to do is you want to suck all the gas from under your slab before it uh, permeates through your slab and through the cracks inside of your house. And usually it gets stuck in your basement mostly because there's less air circulation there. Obviously, if you have an air exchanger, you have forced air and you have good air circulation, it's going to help. But the best way to get rid of it is just to stop it from getting in your house in the first place. So it's very simple. You dig a hole in your slab, you put a pipe in, you seal it up, you route that pipe all the way up through your attic, through your roof, like you would for a plumbing vent, basically. And then you have a fan attached that's made for this. It's made to run 24 seven. It's made to deal with condensation and a bit of water. And then you just turn it on and it vacuums everything from under your slab and exhausts it out of your roof before radon even has a chance to enter your house. Now, getting it professionally done, quite expensive, um, which with the state of things, COVID, renovations, trying to maintain the property, we don't have a lot of spare cash, so I decided to attempt it myself and very, very happy with the results. So I went online, did a lot of research. Basically, I bought a sewer pipe, a four inch internal diameter. I bought a matching radon fan. I went with the Radon Away 145C model. Uh, just so you know, the attachment for the 145C, you can just use a regular flexible 4-inch uh, to 4-inch PVC 
uh, connector, it'll work just fine for your four inch pipes. Because sometimes they're four and a half inch or a bit bigger, a bit smaller, depending on what type of pipe you decide to go with. And I basically drilled a hole in my slab, created a hole, dug. Um, some people recommend removing about uh, five gallons, so a Home Depot orange bucket worth of, of material, so to give more uh, room for the radon to seep in there, to accumulate, and then you can suck it out as a vacuum. The good thing is I am on sand, so sand lets water and air and gases pass through a lot easier than clay. So it's a lot easier for me to vacuum everything. Now I try to pick a spot in the house that was as central as I could, but there are pipes, PEX pipes in the floor for eventual radiant heat in the slab in the floor. So I was very limited with where I could drill without risking of bursting one of the pipes. Uh, I ended up going under the stairs, which was fairly central in the house uh, width-wise and lengthwise, and I just try to center it as best as I can. But I knew for a fact, because I took a lot of pictures before we poured the slab, that I knew there were no PEX pipes there, and indeed there were none, so I didn't break anything, thankfully. Dug a hole, put in a pipe, ran everything up to the attic. Um, had to get creative with some things. I will have to build a small bulkhead at some point. There is a wall in the bathroom that was furred out, so a thicker wall to accommodate the plumbing vent. But uh, I realized eventually that he ended up going crooked with his pipe, so I thought it was a straight shot. But the three inch had enough room inside of that wall to not be an issue. But a four inch pipe external diameter is four and a half inches, and your regular two by four is only three and a half inches. So you have an inch there extra that you have to play with. So I decided to just elbow out inside of the house and I'll build a little bulkhead just to hide that into the attic and then exhausting through the roof. So I finally managed to do everything. What was it? Last Friday, today being Thursday. So uh, basically a week ago, I was unable to hop on the roof because there was snow and it was cold to try and finalize everything going through the roof. Uh, this was my mistake. So I've been pulling air that is I don't know, 10 degrees air, which is underneath my slab right now, uh, 10 degrees Celsius. And I'm shooting it inside of the attic and uh, basically I'm putting a lot of humidity up there. So some of the stuff did freeze a bit because we've been hitting minus five to minus 10 degrees. Today's not too bad, it's a mild day, so hopefully it'll dry a bit. But I'm happy I noticed it because I didn't want to have a, a moisture, uh, moisture freezing and eventually maybe mold problem up there. So this morning I was able to hop on the roof yesterday or the day before i went up with a broom to try and clear a lane for me so i wouldn't slip i let the sun do its job to melt the rest and give me a lot of safe working space uh, first thing this morning measured my things drilled a hole in the metal roof went through installed the boots to waterproof it properly so now i'm exhausting whatever is under my slab outside of the house into the outdoors and I don't have to deal with any problems with humidity inside of the attic anymore. So now the good news. Um, radon levels usually outdoors like this uh, usually is under 30 becquerels per meter cube. Right now inside of the house I am hitting levels underneath 20. So basically I have less radon inside the house than there is in the outside world. I am very very happy with this. I know that long-term health is important we just had a baby daughter. I want to make sure that she is safe, that everybody in the house is safe. Um, I want to make the house as safe as possible. Overall, out of pocket, it was about $1,000 to install the whole system. Uh, I decided to run it off a switch that's controlled via Wi-Fi so that I can remotely uh, monitor it, turn it on or off. I can put it on a schedule if I want. There are programs. Uh, the View Plus Hub, if you want, has a web dashboard on the app and there are some options where there's a program called if this then that so i could monitor the radon level and if it gets too high it would automatically start the fan for me and once it drops again i could stop it so i don't have to run it 24 7 but these fans are made to run 24 7. so at the end of the day very happy with this install um i knew i had to do something about it i knew a little while ago that the levels were fairly high uh, when I was looking at the numbers last winter, I knew they were high, but once spring and summer came around, the numbers dropped, uh, which is normal because there's a lot more air circulation during spring.
and summertime. And once the fall hit and we start to close everything up again, the level started to rise again to a level I was not comfortable with. Um, Health Canada says between 200 and 600, you have about two years to re remediate. Um, above 600, you should do it within the year and under 200 uh, is acceptable levels. Now I found a safer and I preferred that scale that said um, over 200 remediate within one year, between 100 and 200 remediate within two years and under 100 is tolerable acceptable levels. And right now the highest I've seen since the fan's been running and the system has been working is 20. And right now is the worst time for radon. The levels are the highest. So if I'm seeing 20 Beck rolls per meter cubes during the worst time right now, then I'm very pleased with what this fan and this system is doing. The other thing you have to keep in mind is you have to find all of the holes inside of your slab, the connections between the walls and the slab. Um, I have a well access that comes through my slab. So I made sure to seal that up as best as I can. I used some spray foam to really, really keep it airtight so the gases can't come in through that hole. Uh, I also have a bathroom that I'm trying to finish and the pit for the drain for the shower is not yet completed. So it's completely open to the uh, underground. So I sealed that up also with some foam and a piece of plywood in the meantime, while I have, or I get the chance to get to it and finish the plumbing and fully seal it up and re pour some concrete on there to finish it up. The fan is the attic. We don't hear it much. It works very well. Uh, everything has been glued using PVC glue. Makes a nice tight seal. There is a manometer that you install once you're done. Basically, it's like a suction gauge. Uh, anything other than zero means there is suction in the tube. It's meant to be installed on the tube itself, on the PVC, but I had no easily accessible vertical sections. So I decided to just put it uh, on the drywall in a stud drill a hole inside of the pipe so I can insert the tube to check for suction. Also, I installed it into two separate sections. One second, the wife is calling. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the, the manometer. So basically, drill a hole, check everything. If there is suction, it's gonna pull on the fluid and anything other than zero shows a vacuum, which means that the system is working. And basically, at a quick glance, you can check if you have leaks or whatnot, because you should always have a vacuum present. So you can just peek, look at the manometer, and if it's less or more than zero, meaning there is a vacuum, then you know your system is working. If you're gonna do the install yourself, another thing to note is make sure you have positive angles at all time. Never have a negative 90 degrees, meaning that if there is condensation that forms and water has to drain, you don't want water to accumulate in a 90 degree elbow. You always want a positive 90, so more than 90 degrees, so 91 degrees with your angle so that the condensation will flow down and will return to under the slab where the gravel, sand or earth, whatever, will be able to reabsorb it because you don't want that to freeze and cause problems. You don't want the fan to try and pull some water that it doesn't have to pull. So make sure that it's always a positive angle when I installed it, I installed it in two shots. Basically, I ran the top portion first, vertical on the wall. I did the um, attic part, installed the fan, and I didn't think about it because I couldn't get to the other part till two days later. And two days later, when I went back to my basement, there was a nice puddle, basically, uh, underneath the pipe where I had left things in the meantime because uh, it was 20 degrees Celsius inside the house and it was minus five inside of the attic so that the air that was being transferred was forming condensation. And because I have positive angles and every 90 is a bit uh, bigger than 90, the condensation would form into water and the water would drip down so that I knew I had a good slope and I knew I didn't have any standing water anywhere, but that was a surprise that I wasn't expecting. Ran the fan a bit, it cleared all that condensation out and then I was fine. One more thing you may be uh, one more thing you may be wondering is how loud is it? To be honest, I find that when my furnace, uh, which is a propane furnace, uh, turns on, I feel like the furnace is louder than the radon system. There are some things I want to try to try and mitigate the sound. I want to see if I can put some foam or insulation wherever it goes through walls and pieces of woods to reduce that vibration that we feel going uh, inside of the walls. But honestly, when it's on, uh, if you're right next to it, uh, you will hear it slightly. But when we're sleeping at night, I don't even hear it anymore. And it's more of like a, um, 
it's more of a background noise than anything. So I'm not too worried about sound affecting the quality of life inside of the house. And at the end of the day, I prefer it to be safe, even if it's a little noisy. But to be honest, it's more of a vibration that you hear, and it's really not that bad. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you uh, have never heard of Radon before, uh, you can buy some testers. Um, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Home Improvement Centers usually sell them. There are some kits, basically you just hang it in the basement into a uh, an, an area that's not very um, popular with not a lot of air circulation. You leave it there for, I think it's 30 to 60 days. And uh, afterwards you seal it, you send it to a company and then they will send you back results talking about your radon levels. If you want, you can purchase uh, testers like this that give you a very quick estimate of what your levels are. Obviously it says to wait at least three months to have a long-term average to see what it looks like. Um, but it is a lot more money. I think this one was 150, uh, 150 dollars Canadian when I purchased it. But uh, once I'm done now with my uh, radon mitigation, I will uh, loan it to my dad. And then once he's done and checking, then I loan it to somebody else. So I had some value uh, myself for getting the more permanent tester. Plus, I have the other hub that can also check for radon, and it checks for a lot more. Um, it checks for CO2. Um, dust particles in the air, VOCs, uh, checks humidity, it calculates your mold risk. So it's uh, fairly inter uh, interesting. Uh, we found that our CO2 levels are fairly high. Uh, CO2 lends to poor sleep, uh, bad rest, poor concentration. So we just started venting the house better. And now that the levels are lower, I feel better and I sleep better. Could it be a bit of a, I sleep better because I think or I know I should sleep better? Maybe, maybe it has a bit of placebo effect. But it's nice to be able to check and make sure that everything's healthy and then we have a nice uh, healthy environment for Kemi as she is uh, growing into an amazing small lady if you have any questions please let me know this was a fairly easy process uh, the hardest part was installing all the piping figure out the routing if you're not very comfortable with those things by all means you will have to cut some holes uh, they suggest you can cut and uh, go through a closet uh, something like that where the pipe will not be seen if you don't have a wall that can be used uh, You can also pipe Straight out of the basement and vertical all the way up if you want some of the fans are made to be outside 24 7 I just thought it was a bit of an eyesore I don't want to do that and in my climate in eastern Canada It does get very cold very easily very quickly and I didn't want it to be damaged or frozen or have any type of that problem so I decided to go through the house. Originally, I was gonna go in the same wall in the same area as the plumbing vent. I ended up having to change my plans a bit. I'm gonna have to build a bulkhead, but I'd rather have to do some cosmetic fix and have nice clean air inside the house than the other way around. Any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer with the experience I had. Obviously, I'm not a professional installer, so take this with a grain of salt. This is my experience uh, based on my research and the work I've done. Um, like and subscribe for other videos, other projects. I have other things in the works. The Christmas farm, people came, they grabbed their trees. It was a lot of fun. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.